Welcome to the Trend Micro Deep Security 10 for Administrators video series. This collection of videos provides an overview of tasks that may be required as part of your work as an administrator and Deep Security Manager. The Deep Security Application Control Protection module manages and tracks software changes on protected servers. This protection module locks down software on protected servers so that only known and allowed software executes. In this video lesson, we will enable the application control protection module and set the enforcement method. The software inventory is the basis of how application control detects drifts. Inventories contain all of the software that was installed when you enabled application control on each computer. This is assumed to be the normal applications used for this server. When you enable application control, deep security agents will scan for currently installed software. This is the baseline of what is expected and normal on that computer. Application control assumes that currently installed software should be allowed. Deep security agents continuously monitor the computer for change. Application control is integrated with the kernel and file system and has permissions to monitor the whole computer, including software installed by the root or administrator accounts. The agent looks for disk write activity on software files and compares the file with the hashes of the initially installed software to determine if the software is new or has changed. If any drift from the approved inventory is detected, Application Control will log the change and it will appear on the Actions tab. Unlike the Integrity Monitoring Protection module, which monitors any type of file, Application Control only looks for software files when examining the initial installation and monitoring for changes. Software can include compiled binaries and libraries, such as executable applications, Java jar files and class files, but can also look for scripts that are interpreted or compiled on the fly, even though they remain editable like any plain text file such as PHP, Python, or shell scripts. Even if a file doesn't have execute permissions, the Deep Security Application Control Protection module will still detect it as software if it has a PHP, Python, or Java file extension. The Application Control Protection module will be particularly handy if malware does slip through the Anti-Malware Protection module. When the malware is going to be executed, it will be blocked as it is not part of the allowed inventory on the protected computer. It's important to realize that the Application Control Protection module does require some processing on the computer and, as a result, is not available in agentless implementations. This protection module does require an on-host deep security agent. To use Application Control, you must first ensure that your computers are installed with normal and approved software, including the deep security agent. This is important because when application control is first enabled, the deep security agent builds an inventory of installed software on that computer. This inventory is the baseline of what is expected and normal on that computer and is central to how application control detects drift. Since everything in the inventory is considered to be known, approved software, it is very important to always review all installed software on your computer prior to enabling application control. Any software that is not in the inventory is considered unknown or unrecognized until you either approve it, which adds the software to the whitelist, block it, which adds the software to the blacklist, or you rebuild the inventory to include the software. Building the inventory will approve all currently installed software, even if it is malware. Before building the inventory, verify that unknown or unapproved software is not currently installed. Failure to do so could prevent the Application Control Protection Module 
from blocking that unwanted software. If you are not sure what is installed, the safest way is to make a clean install and then enable application control. Let's go into the Deep Security Manager web console and take a look at the steps required for enabling application control on a protected server. Application control can be enabled either in a policy or on a computer. In this example, let's go to a computer and enable the protection module. Click the computers list to view the list of protected computers in Deep Security and double click one of your supported computers. In this example, we have a CentOS Linux computer running the Red Hat Enterprise 7 Deep Security agent. In the left hand pane, click application control. And on the general tab, the configuration is currently set to off. And this is the default setting for application control. From the list, select the configuration and turn it on. And then we have a choice of enforcement methods. You can set application control to block unrecognized software until it is explicitly allowed. And with this enforcement method, all applications that are not part of the inventory will be blocked. And if you'd like to allow the software, you would change it and add it to the whitelist. The other enforcement method will allow all unrecognized software until it is explicitly blocked. So in this case, any applications that are not part of the inventory will be allowed, but you could add the applications to the blacklist to block them. Click Save and Close. And you'll note that the policy is being pushed to the computer. It'll just take a moment to send the policy and as well, the baseline inventory for the computer is going to be created. So notice the prompt in the lower left hand corner saying that the application control inventory scan is taking place on one computer. It'll just take a moment for the inventory scan to complete. The task column has cleared, so the application control inventory scanning is completed. Let's go to our CentOS computer and install a new application to test the state of the application control protection module. I've logged into my CentOS Linux operating system. The first thing I'm going to need to do is log in as the root user to install the new applications. So I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to switch to the root user and type in the password. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a command to install an application. In this case, I'm going to install an application called Inkscape, which is a graphics utility that I want to run on my protected server. Now in this example, there are some dependencies related to the Inkscape application, so some other application files are going to be affected. And we're going to see this in the application control list because there's going to be more than one application file that will have been modified. So it's currently installing the applications, including the Inkscape application. The installation of my new application is complete. So let's shut down the terminal and let's attempt to log into the application. Under the Applications menu, I'm going to go to Graphics, click on the new Inkscape application, and the application starts. 
This satisfies our enforcement method, which said that we're going to allow applications unless we otherwise deny them. So let's shut down the Inkscape application and let's go change the enforcement for this application to block it. So I'm back in the Deep Security Manager web console. Let's double click on the protected server, click on the application control protection module and click on the application control events. Let's click get events to make sure that our list is up to date. And you'll note that the, our application, which in this case is Inkscape, is going to be allowed because the action or the enforcement method that we chose allowed applications unless they were specifically blocked. So in this case, I can click on change rules and select the option to block Inkscape. Click OK. And you'll notice that the policy is being sent to the one computer. So it'll just take a moment and the rules are being updated on that one computer. Let's return to the CentOS computer and attempt to launch the application. I'm back on the CentOS computer. Let's go to the Applications menu under Graphics and select Inkscape and you'll notice that the application does not launch. We changed the state for this application by adding it to the blacklist and now the Inkscape application is being blocked by the application control protection module. Let's return to the Deep Security Manager web console and take a look at the events related to this. Back in the Deep Security Manager web console, let's return to the protected server application control, application control events. So you'll notice here that our application is now blocked and there's the action that's being performed on the Inkscape application. And if we click the decisions log tab, here we will see the decision based on the application being listed in the blacklist. So in this example, the Inkscape application was blocked because it is now part of the blacklist, not part of the default inventory. In the Deep Security Manager web console, if we click on the Actions menu, we'll be able to see entries related to software change. So there were a bunch of other applications that were changed. So you can click on allow all or block all for these different categories of applications that were modified. And if you go to the alerts tab, if you have alerts set up, you'll also be able to see alerts related to the software block. Normally you will want application control to alert you when there are unexpected software updates. However, some updates are expected and you will need to provide allowance for these updates. To avoid unnecessary downtime due to manual approvals and to avoid receiving alerts about normal software updates, you can indicate when your maintenance window is. You can do this by enabling maintenance mode until you complete the update. Application control will still block software that is in the block rules but it will allow the new software and add new or changed software to the baseline inventory. From the computers menu, let's return to our protected server with the application control protection module enabled. And on the general tab in the maintenance mode section, what you can do is select a time period for the maintenance window. You will want to set a time period for the maintenance window. This will prevent scenarios where the administrator forgets to turn off maintenance mode once the update is complete. The next time the deep security agent on the computer connects with the deep security manager, the agent will enable maintenance mode. From the list, select a time period. So in this case, we're going to turn on maintenance mode for this protected computer for the next two hours.
In the Deep Security Manager web console, you'll note that maintenance mode is enabled until this date and time. If you complete the maintenance before the expiration of the two hours, you can return and disable maintenance mode. Application control is designed to assist your software change management process. It should not be used for unregulated computers with continuous and large numbers of software changes. Too many changes make large rule sets that consume more memory. If you don't use maintenance mode during authorized software updates, too many changes can also result in high administrator workload because they must manually create allow rules. If unrecognized software changes exceed the maximum, application control will stop detecting and displaying all of the computer's software changes. This prevents accidental or malicious stability and performance impacts, consuming too much memory, disk space, and network bandwidth. If this happens, Deep Security Manager will notify you through alerts and an event log. You must resolve the issue to continue detecting software changes. One way that you can reset application control is to disable the application control protection module. Once the agent has acknowledged this and cleared the error status, you can re-enable application control once again and a new inventory will be created. There are some mechanisms within application control that are only available through the Deep Security API. This includes the ability to share software inventories between protected computers. If you have a large collection of computers with identical inventories, you can create the application inventory on one computer and then share that inventory with the other similar computers through the API. Also, if you have a whitelist or a blacklist created for a protected computer, that can also be shared with other computers through the API. The Application Control Protection Module in Feature Release 2 has been enhanced with a new global block by hash feature that enables administrators to submit known bad hash values to deep security for the application control blacklist enforcement. This control recognizes a new global rule set that includes a list of hash values to be blocked. It's important to note that this rule set will take precedence over any other rules from existing shared or local rule sets and will be enforced by every deep security agent enabled with application control. This feature provides a simple way for users to block unwanted or bad software from running at a global system-wide level. This design allows the workflow to be fully automated with APIs for creating global rule sets and adding and deleting hash values. This concludes the blocking unapproved software lesson as part of the Trend Micro Deep Security 10 for Administrators video series.